Hey friends, I've created a short hip strengthening practice for you. This was made for climbers in mind, so if you're looking to strengthen through your hips in those the high steps and the external rotation, the inner line of the legs, or like stemming, um, this could be a neat practice to roll into your week. Um, this practice could also be super useful for you if you are someone who has a vinyasa or a yoga asana practice that involves some more extreme hip openings and then suddenly after your practice you want to go uh, for a big hike or a ski or a bike or carry your kids on your back. This could be a really great uh, mini practice to fit in after some of that work that you're doing with bigger openings in your hips. So if you want a couple blocks, that'll make it easier in some of these shapes. They can go underneath your hands. So you could have those with you at the top of your mat. And let's start in a seat. So start in a, a staff shape and you can take your hands behind you for this or you can take them more forwards. Might feel a little more challenging if you're a little more tipped forwards. Point your toes and we'll lift our right leg off the ground. And then without dropping the heel down, pulse it up for one, two, three, so you might feel that in your quad and your hip flexor. And then we'll turn the leg out from the hip. So roll the hip and the knee and the foot out to the side and pulse without touching the floor for one, two, three. And then we're gonna roll everything in. So the inner hip down, the inner knee and the big toe. And we'll go up and down for one, two, three. And then we'll release that. You can walk your sit bones back and lean into a forward fold, take a breath. You can come on up from that. We'll do the other side. So point your toes, spine nice and tall, sternum lifted, left leg off the ground without touching the ground for one, two, three. I have Jennifer Whitney to thank for these. You can turn your hip, knee, and foot out, external rotation, and go up for one, two, three, or maybe one or two more. And then roll in with your inner hip, in with your knee, and with your big toe, and pulse again there for three and then you can let that go can bring your toes towards you your heels away and start to lean into a forward fold however far you get take your breath in and out there and come on up and then we're just going to turn to this side so you can see me in a 90 90 so i'm going to take my right leg into external rotation left leg into internal and then i'm going to lean a little to the right here and try to lift my left ankle off the ground by using my outer hip a little more than my side waist. So if you feel like really crunching your side waist in this, try to keep it long and work with your hip for one, two, three. Maybe hold it up there on the last one for a moment. You can lean a little more over to the right and then try to lift the whole unit of your shin uh, off the ground for one, two, three, maybe hold it up there. See if you can isolate your hip a little more than your side waist. Come on down out of that and then let's push our left hip forwards as much as you like and then drop it down to the floor. Push it forwards and down to the floor. Forwards and here let's point our toes. You can use a block or something underneath your right hand. Roll onto your shins so you come up to kneel. And you can use your seat muscles to like squeeze your glute to push your hips a little more forwards. Lift out of your lower back and maybe you give yourself a big side stretch here. And you can lean back as much as you like. And come on down out of that. Okay, now we're gonna un point our toes and try to lift our right shin off the floor. So the one in external rotation for one. And if you can, try to take the knee away from you and the foot in towards you, two, three, and then you can hold it up. Maybe you're leaning way back or leaning a bit forwards here. Hold that, keep rolling it into external rotation. So knee down, ankle in towards you, let it go. And then you can walk your seat back and start to lean in over the middle of your shin, so your sternum kind of over your shin. Find that just right amount of hip stretch for you. So sometimes overdoing it in a stretch um, doesn't work to your advantage the next day. So you can just ask yourself if you feel safe, if you're gonna be okay tomorrow in the stretch. And everybody overdoes it sometimes, so that's fine. Just noticing it for yourself if you do this session more than once. So we'll come on up. You can shift through the center and over to the other side. So left leg in external rotation, right leg in internal. Lean a little left 
and start to bring your right ankle up off the ground. So if it's frustrating, you can't even get it off the ground, just lighten it as best you can and keep working with that. Isolating the outer hip, try to keep your sideways fairly long there. And then you can lean a little more over to the side and lift the whole thing off for a couple um, times. As many feels good for you. Maybe hold it there, try to really isolate your hip in that movement. Try to keep your shin fairly parallel to the ground. And then you can lower it down and push your hip forwards and lower it to the ground. And forwards, lower it to the ground. Push it forwards, point your toes there. You can use a block underneath your left hand to bring you up onto your shins. Strengthen your glutes to move your hips as much forwards as feels okay that you get a good stretch there through your right front of your right hip. And you can let your right arm come up and give yourself a bit more of a stretch. Maybe lift out of your lower back a little. And then lower back down, unpoint your toes. And then you can start to bring your left shin up. So you can do that a couple of times, trying to take that left knee down and the ankle up will make it a little more challenging likely for you in that external rotation. And you can hold it up there, hold it. Try to really roll that knee to the ground, ankle up, and then lean into it. So you can walk over and go into that hip stretch for you. It's okay if your right hip is off the ground here. Come up into the center. We'll transition onto our hands and our knees. And we'll take our left leg back. So we're in a three uh, pointed tabletop here. And then let it go across. So left leg goes across to the right and reach it way to the right and way off your mat and then sink your hips back. So it's almost like you're in a bit of a pigeon form. Um, so you might feel that in your right outer hip. And then we'll come back up to that three legged um, plank or a tabletop position <laughs> and then turn your knee out to the side and bend your knee and see if you can tap close up towards your armpit with that knee and then take your left foot to the outside of your left hand. So here you can inch your right knee back and try to take your right elbow down to the ground and back up. Could land on a block, right down and back up. You could try to take your left elbow down. Generally that's a little more challenging and back up. And if you like, you can take your right, then your left elbow down, and maybe you try to squeeze your inner left knee in towards your shoulder and see if that feels a bit more contained. And you might feel a pretty big stretch here through your, the front of your right hip. You can also tuck your back toes and lift up your back knee off the ground, and maybe even come a little lower. Some of you might stack your hands and take your forehead down. Okay, then we'll drop that right knee. Shift the hips back. So take the hips right over your back right knee. And again, try to tap your right forearm down, your left forearm down, uh, maybe both or onto a block. But this time, you're, um, you're closed at the front of your right hip. So you might feel this more in your, like the top of your IT band on your outer left hip as you come down there. And then you can kind of shift forwards. Now we're gonna shift that uh, right shin over to the left, maybe even pick it up, see if you can do that. So you're gonna kind of swivel it over, pick it up, and see if you can catch your foot with your left hand. And then turn your body into a twist. So you, maybe you're still catching onto that left, um, with your left hand, your right foot and then maybe let your hips sink a bit. You can also turn your left toes and your left knee out and get into the front of your right leg. Um, some of you might even come down onto your forearm there. And then you can let that go. Come back onto your hands and knees, center your hip, back hip over your back knee. And then we're gonna shift back into more of a runner stretch. So your toes go up, shift back. Now you're gonna feel this likely a little more in the underside of your leg, stretching out from all those heel hooks if you're a climber. <laughs> you can perch on your back toes. And then shifting back forwards. Now see if you can pick up your left leg. So you could do it with a bent or, or straight leg. 
um, and try to keep your hips level, your belly button pointing to the floor and see if you can pick that leg up and then sweep it out to the side. So you could also do this with a bent knee. Sweep it out to the side and then try to level your hips a bit more. So likely your left hip's gonna be a little lifted. Try to drop it down and pulse that leg up as high as you can into the air. Reach it back into that three-legged tabletop and then drop it back down and we'll go in for an arch of the spine and around of the spine. Go for those good feelings. Right leg out to that three-pointed tabletop across leg to the left and stretch it back and you can come into that uh, left buttock stretch and a nice left side or a right side stretch and then come back up into that position and we're going to turn the knee out to the side and see if we can tap close to the right shoulder with the knee and then take the foot to the outside of the hand. So you can walk your back knee back. We're going to let our hips actually drop to the floor in this one and see if you can take your left elbow down or onto a block. Come on up. Maybe that right elbow taps down a little harder on that side maybe. Come on up, maybe both. Come down or find the block. And you can tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg if you want a little more activity in that leg. And some of you might explore coming down a little closer to the ground. So you can try that. And then you can Bring that back knee in. So now your hips are gonna, your front back hip is gonna close. Take the back hip over the back knee. And then again, try your left elbow tap down, your right elbow tap down, maybe both. This time, maybe you're feeling that a little more in that outer right hip and you can squeeze that right knee in towards your shoulder. And you can come on out of that. Now we're gonna swivel that left shin over so that maybe we can take our right hand, pick it up, pick up the foot and catch the foot. And then so as much as you can here, roll into a twist like you're looking over your right shoulder. And you can also turn that right knee and that right foot out as you hold, catch onto that left leg, left foot. Some of you might explore coming down onto your Forearm makes it a little more special in the front of that left hip. Okay, and you can let that whole thing go. We'll come back up onto our hands. Okay, so here you can lean your hips back and maybe you come up onto your fingertips too here, but try to lift your left, uh, right leg off the ground, right? So try to lift it a little or a lot. Um, could be bent lift from that hip and then turn the foot out so you're really kicking it out to the side. Try to level your pelvis a little more. So drop that right hip and you can lift that leg up in space. Try to do that from your hip and not from your low back or side. So really isolate that outer hip. Explore that and then sweep it all the way back and release the knee down. You can arch through your spine and round through your spine. Let's come into our downward facing dog and check out how it feels. See if you have a little more tip of your pelvis maybe. Sometimes this work acts like an active release. So if you engage, you might feel a bit more release in some of those areas because sometimes they're just sleepy. So then you can walk your feet up to your hands and come up halfway, maybe use blocks for this, and then fold into your forward fold. And just notice how it feels. Does it feel any different? You can do that a couple times. Fold into your forward fold, and then come all the way up. Okay, so you might want blocks underneath your hands for this one. I'll show you that, you could do that, right? Or you could have your fingertips on the floor. <clears throat> so we'll come into a forward fold with our heels kind of right underneath our hips and then shift your weight into your left foot and suck your left outer hip so kind of compact it in so like your hip is trying to move towards the floor of your 
pelvis right into the middle. And then see if you can lift your right leg straight out to the side and you can pulse it up there or lift it straight out to the side or some of you might even want to um, catch onto your foot or your toe. <laughs> some of you might even want to try to lighten your left hand off the ground. Take a breath there and lower down. And you're just trying to minimize that tip over to the side. So compact your right hip in and you can lift your left leg out to the side, explore that. Um, both outer hips are working pretty strongly. You could try to catch your toe, <laughs> maybe hover and explore that. You can just let it be a bit messy, <laughs> play around with that outer hip strength. And then go into a forward fold, check that out. Hmm. Okay, so this next one is a little play with a pistol. Um, so you can put, if you have blocks, I would recommend putting them just down on either side of you. And then you can try this out. So right leg out, maybe start at like a 45 degree instead of a 90. And from there, bend into your left leg, try to keep those hips sucking into center. Nice upright spine, tap down and come back up. So you can try that on the other side. So about a 45, compact hips, <laughs> tap down and come back up. So notice here if your knee's really rolling in, your hips popping out, try to keep your knee and your hip aligned. So then you can go up to a 90 if you want, start to lower down, maybe find your blocks and shift into a toe squat like that. And then sternum lifted. When you need to put your heel down, heel down and come up. <laughs> you can try that on the other side. So kind of like that 90, sternum lifted. Maybe find your blocks, come into that toe squat. When you're ready, keep your sternum lifted. Try to keep your spine as upright as possible to come up. And then you can try that, you know, without your blocks. Work in bite-sized pieces. So maybe you bring it up and shift down, hips to the middle. Try to really lift your spine up straight and release. Other side, one side is likely gonna feel like way easier. Lower down and lift your sternum, really suck your hips into the center. And the trick to getting those is just doing more of them. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing in this practice with me.